Okay, boys and girls, we are going to be reading some narrative nonfiction called The Flag Maker. Now, a good strategy for keeping track of what happens in a narrative is to retell key events. And retelling helps readers um, better understand what they have read because you wanna understand the things you're reading. Remember, boys and girls? Otherwise, what's the point of reading? It's just words then. And we want to make connections, and we want to enjoy what we're reading, we wanna understand it, we want to connect to whatever it is we read. And so this is what we're going to work on doing. We want to be able to retell a story. It helps us understand the story. And here are some steps. We think about who is the main character? What does the main character want in the story? But what problem does the main character face? Because the main character always faces a problem. Otherwise, it would be a very boring story. And then how is the problem resolved at the end of the story? Now, remember, we call that problem the conflict. And then how is it resolved, the resolution? So what we want to do when we retell boys and girls is we want to tell about the important characters, because there's usually more than one character in a story. We want to tell about the setting of the story. We want to tell the events in the beginning, the middle, and the end. And then we want to tell about the conflict and the resolution of the story those things help us understand what is going on. We stop and we retell and we think what has been going on in the story so far. And we use those sequence words. First, next, then, later, and finally. And that helps us. It helps with our comprehension of whatever it is we're reading. Now, and here's our tip. This is what, these are kind of the, the clue words that help us. We think who, what, but, and how. And those help us retell the story. We think who, we think what, but, and how. And we're going to practice that. And now we're going to start to talk about our wonderful story, The Flag Maker. It's such an interesting story. I think you're really going to enjoy it so much. Now, boys and girls, I want you to turn to page 250 in your book, 250, okay, 250. I'm going to switch to my smaller book. Now, before we even read our story, we're going to talk about what is, we're going to talk about the genre. And it is narrative nonfiction. Now, I don't think we've had narrative nonfiction this year, have we? This is our first time. And narrative nonfiction gives factual information by telling a true story. So, boys and girls, this is a true story that we're going to be hearing today. And narrative nonfiction includes real people and events and shows those events in chronological order. So the sequence, this is in sequence. That's the text, um, I forgot what we call it. The um, text structure is sequence. Now, narrative nonfiction may include words that are specific to the topic. So these words all go with this topic. And then narrative nonfiction may include visuals. So boys and girls, I want us to set a purpose for reading. Oops, I'm gonna slow down a little bit. I want you to think about the genre and title of this text. What do you know about the American flag? What do you know about the American flag? Who can tell me something they know about the American flag? What do you know, Logan? It stands for our country. It stands for our country. What do you know, Olivia? Stands for the 13 colonies. What do you know, Hector? The 50 stars stand for the 50 states now. The 50 states are represented by the 50 stars. Okay, 
so you know a bunch of things about the flag. What would you like to know? What do you want to learn about the flag? Think about what you would like to learn. Bianca? Who made the flag? Who made the flag? What do you want to learn, Rose? Lucas, what do you want to learn? When it was made. When it was made. Santiago. Why are there red and white stripes? Why are there red and white stripes? Those are interesting and excellent questions. Yes, Hector. Um, why did the states have to be made of stars? They can be, they been made of something different. Yeah, why are there stars? Yes, why is that the symbol they use? Stars, that's a good question. Yes, Logan. Where was it made? That's a very good question. Write down your questions right now. Write them down. Write what you want to learn. Those are all excellent questions. Lots of things that we would like to learn. So write down those questions. Maybe you'll learn some of them. Okay, now let's meet our author and our illustrator because they're always so interesting. Now, boys and girls, our author's name is Susan Campbell Bartoletti. And Susan Campbell Bartoletti was an eighth grade English teacher for 18 years before her students inspired her to write. Today, she is an award-winning author of picture books, novels, and nonfiction for children. Her work has received many awards, including the Newbery Honor, one of the highest honors for children's books. So it's very exciting for her because that is a big honor. Then, oh, going the wrong way here. Then let's meet the illustrator. As a child, Claire A. Nivola was surrounded by her parents' artwork. In fact, her first job as an illustrator came about because her father didn't want the assignment. She is also an author. So the illustrations in this book are awesome, in this story are awesome. I think you're going to enjoy it. It's a very interesting story. It has a lot of information in it. And remember, is this a true story, boys and girls? Yes, it is a true story. So you're going to get true facts from the story. This really happened. Yes? Wait, have you read this before? Yes, I've read this story before. Oh. I just read it a little while ago with the other class, as a matter of oh. fact. I read everything twice. All the lessons I do twice. First oh, with the other wait. class, then with you. So you did read? I've already read it. So now, here's what we're going to do. We are going to read this story. So look at the beautiful cover. The Flag Maker. Okay. Are we ready, boys and girls? So now we're going to stop and we're going to discuss. Okay. After we read it. So everybody pay attention because there will be some very interesting things in here that I'm going to ask you. It was 1812, and the United States was at war with Britain. A country at war needed plenty of flags. In Baltimore, a 12-year-old girl named Caroline Pickersgill and her mother, Mary, made flags. 
Caroline and her mother sewed flags so that militia and cavalry officers could direct their men during battles on land. They sewed flags so that Navy ships could communicate with each other during battles at sea. They sewed flags for the privateers that attacked British ships. But no matter how many flags they made, and no matter how many battles the Americans fought, the Americans could not defeat the British. Okay. So boys and girls, who can tell me when and where is this selection set? When is this taking place and where is it taking place? When is it taking place? Hector? In 1812. In 1812, very good. And where is it taking place? Ellison? In Baltimore. In Baltimore. Boys and girls, Baltimore is a city. In case you didn't know, it is a city. And what is happening in the world right now in Baltimore? Logan? Um, they're going to war. Between who? The United States and Britain. Thank you, very good. And how did Navy ships communicate with each other during battle in 1812? Ava? With flags. With flags. That's so interesting. And how did that time period affect the way ships communicated with each other? Okay, so it's 1812. How did, because it's 1812, how did they communicate with each other in 1812, the ships? Lucas? And why did they communicate, how, how did that, why? How did they, why did they have to communicate with flags? So they know if they surrender. Okay, why couldn't they communicate a different way? Why couldn't they text each other or send each other email? Because they didn't have electronics. They didn't have electronics, very good. They didn't have technology in 1812, did they? Did they have technology back then? No. So could they send an email? No. Could they send, could they call each other on the telephone, Hector? No. no. What were you gonna add to that? I was gonna say, um. Oh, did I make you forget? Yeah. Oh. I'm trying to remember what I was going to say. I mean, they, they were kind of, they were in the water. Oh, they were in the water, you're right. Yeah, so they can't really like just get out, get out and get, walk all the way over there. Yeah, they, they can't, like, can they? Have... That's right, they can't get up and just walk and talk to the other ship. I mean, they're going to war. Yeah, they're at war. You are so right. Okay, now, everybody look at this picture. Look at the picture on page 253. Study it for a minute. Take in the details on it. Now, what details in this picture help you understand that this selection is set long ago? Is there anything in here that helps you know that this was from long ago? Any details? Logan? The pictures. Okay, so these pictures. So that lady looks like a long ago person, right? What else, Gabe? Should I come back to you? Yes. Bryson. Um, on the table there's a quill. There's a quill. Yeah, there's a quill. Anything else in this picture that lets us know that this is from very long ago? Rosie. There's no electronics in that picture. Yes, Allison. They're clothes. They're clothes, for sure. 
You don't dress like that, do you, Allison? You don't have an outfit like that at home? Do you have an outfit like that, um, Olivia? I don't have an outfit like that. I don't come to school dressed like that, do I? No. Should I? No. Would that be fun if I dressed like that? Do you think if I walked around like that, people would look at me and wonder? They think maybe I was going to a costume party or something. What do you think? They think, oh, she must be going to some costume, or maybe she's in a play. What else do you notice, Logan? All the wood around the house. There is a lot of wood, yes. What else is going on in this picture that leads you to believe it is not from modern times? There's some other things, maybe. Ava? There's no sewing machine. There's no sewing machine. How are they sewing? By hand. By hand. They're sewing by hand for sure. I mean, people will sometimes sew a button on by hand, right? But they don't sew whole things by hand. You don't sew like a whole dress by hand. Does anybody's mom or dad sew? Okay. When they sew, who sews, Rosie? Like your mom? Does she sew clothes? She'll mend them and stuff. Does anybody's mom sew clothes, make clothes? Does she use a sewing machine? She doesn't She doesn't sew a whole outfit by hand, though. Yeah, she uses a sewing machine. She uses a sewing machine. But so, but these people, they don't have a sewing machine, so they're going to sew them all by hand. So those are some of the things that we notice. They have this old-fashioned clothing. They have a quilt. What's next to the quilt? Do you know what that is? What is that next to the quill? Lucas? Um, well, you just, like, the ink. Yeah, that's ink for the quill. So they don't have like a pen, like I have a pen, like I have my cool pen. They don't have a pen like that. So those are things that all tip us off. But, you know, people still live in houses that are from that time period. So a lot of the things in this house could still be the same. I mean, you could still have a piece of furniture that looks like that, right? So you could still have furniture that looks like that. You could still have a piece of furniture that looks like that, as a matter of fact. There's still paintings of people that look like that. So I think the thing that's really glaringly from a long time ago would be the people and what they're doing in that, like that. Okay, let's turn the page. One summer day, Caroline and her mother welcomed three military officers to their flag shop. The men ordered an American flag for Fort McHenry, the fort guarding the waters near Baltimore. The flag must be so large that the British will have no trouble seeing it from a distance, said one officer. Okay, now, when I'm reading a selection that's narrative nonfiction, I can retell it in my own words to help me better understand it. So to retell what I've read so far in The Flag Maker, I think about whom the selection is about and where it is set and what the problem is and the events that happen. So The Flag Maker is about a girl named Caroline. It takes place in Baltimore in 1812 during a war. The main problem seems to be that the Americans cannot defeat the British. One day, Caroline and her mother are asked to make a huge American flag for a fort. So, so far, that is what is going on in this story. Excited, Caroline and her mother set to work right away. Out of wool bunting, they cut pieces for broad red and white stripes. They cut a large field of dark blue they cut white cotton stars. Broad. Something that is broad is wide. Now, you know what I notice on this page? That, they, that the author is repeating some words. Do you notice any words that the author repeated, Bryson? They cut. They cut. And an author will do that to kind of draw attention to important details or events in the story. 
and sees that this is important. And it's important because she wants to emphasize that they're making this flag. So it makes me think that this flag is going to be a very important flag. That's what this is making me think, that this is a super important flag because that's being emphasized. They cut. They cut a large field of dark blue. They cut white cotton stars. So when you're reading, you should look for things like that. You should look to see if the author is repeating words because they do that for a reason, because they want you to notice something. They want to emphasize something. Yes? Um, he also said three times flag. Flag, that's right. So the flag is very important in the story. It's, called the fla it's about the flag maker, right? So that is very important. So good catch, Hector. I like how you're paying attention. Keep it up. Okay. Oh, everybody look at this page. Now, how does this help you understand how big the flag is? Santiago. They need more people. They need more people. How many people are they using to make this flag? Two. Not two, count them all. Four. Four, there's four people working on that flag. And this is just, just one part of it. That's just an edge of the flag. Can you imagine the size of this? If, look at them. They're sitting there on the floor working on that flag. Can you imagine what the size of that flag must be? If there are four people working on a flag and it looks like that? It's just amazing the size of that flag. Day after day, they sewed stitch after stitch, red stripe after white stripe, star after star. Caroline's grandmother and cousins helped. So did her mother's slave, her house servant too. Night after night, they worked by candlelight, long past bedtime. The wool bunting itched, the needle pricked. Caroline's fingers ached and her eyes felt gritty and sore. But inch by inch, they sewed until the flag spilled over their laps and lay in folds on the floor. Gritty. When something feels gritty, it feels rough and sandy. Okay, don't turn the page because I want you to be on this page. Because I need you to look on that page. And I want you to tell me what details on that page lead you or let you know about the time period in which this, this story is set. How do you know that this story takes place a long time ago? Because there's some things that give us, give us that hint. What do you notice? Ava? They use different kinds of candles. They use, they're using candles. That's, that is a tip off. What else? Candles, what else? Hector? Um, what's the red thing in black? Um, I don't know because I'm not looking at the picture. We're looking at the words. We're oh. looking at the words right oh. now. That's what we're supposed to be looking at. The words. What else? Because here it says night after night they work by candlelight. So they, they have the candlelight. So obviously no electricity. Olivia? No electricity. They had to use candlelight. That's what Ava said. Yes, Bryson. It says Caroline's grandmother. Caroline's. Grandmother and cousins helped in them. It says. So did her mother's slave, her house servant too? Her slave, right? So this was when they still had slaves. Do we have slaves now? No. So this was before slavery was outlawed. So this was a long time ago and people still had slaves. 
Anything else? Yes. No, we're talking about the words. That's what we're looking at. Yes. Yes, Lucas. It said the rule was like a king, and like the rule doesn't really exist anymore because they like had a certain chapter. Okay. It was itchy. And so they're working night after night through candlelight. They're sewing it by how with their what? Rows? Yeah. Hands. So they're sewing by hand. No machines, right? They have a slave and they have to use candlelight. So that helps us know that this story took place a long time ago. Next page. Soon the flag outgrew the sewing room. They carried it to a large malt house. They spread out the flag on the malt house floor and they sewed still more. Okay, now what problem with making the flag do Caroline and her mother encounter? What happens, Bianca? Yeah, so what do they do? They bring it to a large malt house. And how does the illustration help you? How does the illustration help you? Olivia? Does it help you see how big the flag is in there? Yes. Finally, after six long weeks, the last star was sewn into place. The last threads were snipped and knotted. From hoist to fly, it was the largest flag Caroline had ever seen. The flag was delivered to Fort McHenry, where soldiers raised it high above the ramparts. Each day, Caroline looked for her flag as it waved over the fort. It looked tiny in the distance, but she felt proud. Okay, so remember when we were watching the video, How Do We Celebrate the Fourth of July? Mm -hmm. And you saw in the video, they showed flags flying. And how do people feel when they see the flag flying? Logan? And yes, and what kind of feeling does that make in Americans? They feel what, Ava? Proud. They feel proud. You feel proud of your country and your flag. And so, how is that similar to how Caroline feels? How does Caroline feel? How's Caroline feel? Bianca? Yeah. She feels proud of that flag. She helped make it, right? And she's proud of, proud of her country. Over the next year, the flag shop grew even busier. Caroline and her mother sewed more flags. The Americans fought more battles. Yet they could not defeat the British once and for all. And so a difficult year passed. Why do you think the year is described as difficult? Why is it a difficult year? Santiago? Because they cannot defeat the British. They cannot defeat the British. The Early one August morning, a horse clattered down the Baltimore streets. British sails, its rider shouted, in the Chesapeake Bay. Caroline knew British ships meant one thing, invasion. All over Baltimore, church bells clanged, calling militiamen to arms. Men and boys shouldered long muskets and lined up on the parade grounds. A snare drum rolled, a bugle flared, a commander shouted, forward march. The militiamen tramped off to rout the British. All that day, Caroline tried to go about her work. 
she sewed, she swept. She looked for her flag and waited for news. She swept and sewed and waited still more. The next day, Caroline heard a low rumble like a distant thunderstorm. Cannon. She whispered a prayer for the men. Later, terrible news was again shouted in the streets. The Americans had fought a battle and lost. Now British troops were headed to destroy Washington. Okay, so boys and girls, what I want you to do is I want you to look on page 262. So put your eyes there. How does that illustration help you understand the events on page 263? How does it help you understand those events? What do you think, Logan? They all have guns. Those are, yes, the people have guns to help do what? Why do they have those guns? What are they gonna do with them? Fight the They're gonna fight the British. They're gonna defend their town. What else is going on in that picture? Who's that man on the horse? Who's that man on the horse? Do you know, Hector? Or what were you gonna say? I was gonna say that one man has a trumpet. One man has a trumpet? I see a kid who has like a shotgun or something. Okay. Like what are you going to tell me, Allison? Oh, um, he was the announcer that like, um, the British was coming. Yeah, he's the one who's telling everybody that the British are coming. Very good. So they're telling. It looks like everybody's getting ready for the battle. Now, why do you think? The British troops head to Washington after they invade. Why are they gonna go to Washington? Why are they gonna go to Washington? Logan? Because they don't like America. They don't like America? Why do you think that? Because there were uh, British troops who were going to go ahead and take destroy. Okay, but why Washington? Lucas? Because they were gonna take the country. Okay, yes? Hector? Oh, because um, maybe they, um, they wanted to destroy the White House. The White House? Okay. Olivia? Maybe because that was the capital? I don't know. Yeah, it was the capital. Because it's the capital. You're right. And because the White House is there. It's the capital. Probably because it's, it's an important city. It's the capital of the United States. So that's where they're going to go. Very good. Good thinking, guys. That night, men, women, and children spilled out onto rooftops. They watched the sky over Washington. It glowed an eerie orange. The British were burning the capital. Caroline looked out across the dark harbor toward Fort McHenry. She couldn't see the flag, but she trusted it was there. Okay, now how close are the cities? What details here tell us how close Baltimore and Washington are? Somebody I haven't really heard a lot from. Um, Santiago, how close are the cities of Baltimore and Washington to one another? I mean, what detail lets us know that they're close? They're on the rooftops. Yeah, people can see from the rooftops, right? So people in Baltimore can see Washington burning from their rooftops. And how might this event in Washington make the people in Baltimore feel? How do you think the people in Baltimore feel? Bianca? Do you think they're sad? What do you, how do you think they feel? Gabe? Um, um, not happy. Not happy? Yes? Scared. I'm going to say they probably feel scared would be more like it. Imagine if you are in St. John and there are soldiers burning down Cherville. Do you think you would feel more than sad? Don't you think you'd feel terrified and scared? Yeah, I think you're going to feel more than sad. You wouldn't be just like, oh, boo-hoo. There goes Strax. <laughs> there goes the Cherville Strax. 
Oh, boo-hoo for that. I feel so sad. You would be afraid. You'd be scared. You'd be terrified by what was going on. That's how she feels. She's scared. She's terrified. They're soldiers. They're burning things. They're burning the capital. Bad news, people. Bad news. This is war going on. So, she's not happy. Washington is very near them. I mean, they're watching it from their rooftops. Close. Baltimore prepared to defend itself. Around the city, men dug trenches and built earthworks. Shovels scraped and clicked. Dirt flew. Women and children carried biscuits and sweet tea to the volunteers. In the channel near Fort McHenry, men sunk small ships and barges to block the harbor. Women and children tore soft cloths into bandages. Men moved gunboats into position, ready to fire on British ships. Okay, so now to retell this part of the selection, I think about the characters, the events, and the problems on these pages. So the characters are Caroline and the people, the other people in Baltimore. A big problem occurs when British ships sail into Chesapeake Bay. I say that's an understatement of big problem. It's a super big problem. Next, the people watch as the British set fire to Washington, D.C. They must be worried that the British will invade Baltimore next because they start getting the city ready to defend itself. Once more, Baltimore waited. A day, a week, two weeks. The city held its breath and went to church and went to work and waited for the British to strike. Oh, what do you think that means? The city held its breath. What does that mean? Lucas. Yeah, they're scared and nervous. So the city's scared and nervous while they're waiting. They can hardly breathe, they're so scared and nervous. So does it mean that they're really holding their breath? Is everybody in the city just like this? Not for me? Two weeks. For, yeah, for weeks? Do they, does, is that what that really means, Bryson? No, no. no, it just means they're scared and nervous. Now, why do you think the author included that figurative language? Why do you think the author included that figurative language? Olivia? To show that they to show that they were waiting. They were waiting and they were what? Really scared. They were really scared. You know it. Early one September morning, a loud roar rocked the flag shop. Caroline rushed to the window. British ships were bombing Fort McHenry. Fort McHenry's guns blazed back. Hour after hour, bombs burst louder than thunder. Hour after hour, rockets screamed and flashed brighter than lightning. The shock trembled and shook. The streets turned thick with smoke. The smell of burnt powder filled the air. The British ships crept closer and closer. So how do you think Caroline feels when she sees British ships bombing Fort McHenry? How does she feel? Bianca, she feels scared, she's terrified for sure. And to what does the author compare the sounds of bombs bursting and rockets flashing, Ava? It's lightning. Lightning and? It's louder than thunder. Thunder and lightning. And why do you think the author used that comparison? Logan? Do you know what thunder and lightning sound like? Yeah, because you we all know what thunder and lightning sound like. So then when she says that, we can we know what that sounds like so we can compare it. We have something to compare it to. Otherwise we wouldn't know what it was like. It's something we're familiar with. And things are getting scary now, boys and girls. Evening came. The sky darkened with storm. 
Rain fell. Soon, thunder and lightning joined the cannon and rockets. Ships and fort and sky boomed and flashed together. Each time the sky lit up, Caroline saw that her flag was still there. At midnight, the bombing stopped. One minute, 10 minutes, an hour, and all was still. Oh, look, the author did it again, where she did that thing where she goes, one minute, 10 minutes. So it lets us know that Caroline is really paying attention to the time because she's so tense about what is going on. Very dramatic. Caroline longed for morning light. Now she could only sit and hold on to courage. She tried not to sleep, but she did. At dawn, Caroline awoke. The rain had stopped. Everywhere, sky and water and land looked gray. She couldn't see the fort. A breeze passed through the window. Slowly, the sky cleared. So why do you think Caroline longs for the morning light to come? Why is she longing for that? Yes, Olivia. Because she wants to see what's happening. She wants to see what's happening and she wants to see what? Bryson? She wants to see if her flag is there. There, hoisted high above the ramparts, Caroline saw a tired flag hanging from its staff in the damp morning air. A wool bunting flag sewn full of broad stripes and bright stars, with needles that pricked and fingers that ached. A flag sewn full of pride and courage and hope. Hoisted. If you hoisted a flag, you used ropes to pull it up a pole. Oh, so the flag was still there. Does anything there sound familiar to you? What sounds familiar there? Allison? It sounds like the word flag was still there. It felt like it was in the National Anthem. Yes, that's where that comes from. Those words, it's from that battle. The author of that song was there and he wrote the song from, from that battle. The national anthem is from that. So isn't that cool? Wasn't that a cool story, boys and girls? Who enjoyed that story? Who thought it was very exciting, waiting to see what was going to happen next? I know it was very exciting to see what was going to happen next, to see if would the flag still be there. Can you imagine, boys and girls, being at home and hearing a battle all raging around you, waiting to see what was going to happen? Who would, you wouldn't want that, would you? No. But that's what it was like. That was that, and she's a real person. She's a real person. And I think when I, well, let's. I think part of that flag is in the Smithsonian because they have an absolutely huge flag there. And when I was there, I saw a flag. I think it's that flag. Very cool. I'd have to double check to see if it was that flag. Okay, boys and girls, very good. Now you'll have to read the story tonight.